So this is the other type of question related to the friction bolt okay so you are provided with the property class of 10.9 that means the ultimate tensile stress of the bolt will be 1000 newton per mm square not as 400 newton per mm square because it was 4.6 fu will be 410 for the plate and fy will be 250 nns and nnb will be one for the double butt joint here a new term will be introduced that is design shear frictional capacity that is vd v d f b which is given by mu k and n e k f not capital f not by gamma m f you can see it on page number 76 okay v n s f by gamma m f mu f n e k h f not so mu f is the coefficient of friction generally taken as 0 0.55 n e is the number of planes or faces subjected to frictional resistance in this case we have two face rest uh, which is subjected to frictional resistance and k h is the constant which is one for the fastener and clearance while we are taking this and f not is the torsion uh, sorry minimum bolt tension which is given by uh, a and b into f naught a and b is the net area of the bolt and f naught is the proof stress which is taken as 70 percent of the ultimate tensile stress of the bolt so mu is 0 0.55 multiplied by n e is 2 this is 1 and this is taken f naught is equal to a f naught so a and b net area uh, net area of the threaded part okay so 0 0.78 multiply by pi d square 18 is the diameter and we are taking f naught as the 7 percent 70 percent of the ultimate tensile stress of the bolt so we 1.1 gamma mf is equal to 1.1 so this value comes to be 138.94 kilonewton Similarly, this is the case for working load. Okay, the question has given us as the working load and ultimate load. Gamma MF is 1.10 if slip resistance is designed at service load, that is the working load, and if slip resistance is designed at ultimate load. So, ultimate load means you have to multiply, uh, you have to divide the same factor by 1.25. Okay vdfb the same factor 0 0.55 multiplied by 2 1 0 0.78 pi 18 square by 4 70 percent of fub by 1.25 it will come as 122.26 kN. therefore vdfb ultimate load and vdfb working load so what is the difference between working and ultimate load as we know this is the factor load and this is the unfactored load and slip resistance the friction bolt works with the slip resistance okay uh, in case of previous video we were using a bearing bolt that will be uh, prone to slip but in case of friction bolt it is not uh, allowed to slip hence if slip is not permitted at working load if slip is permitted at working load this will come in the condition the second step will to be calculate design shear capacity which we know bd sb is equal to fub under root 3 gamma mb a n b n n b plus a n s n S B okay this is A S now substitute the value as thousand under root three one point two five A and B this is the threaded portion so zero point seven eight pi D square by four number of shear plan uh, intercepting thread is one similarly 
area of the shank portion will be pi d square by 4 multiplied by number of shear plane intercepting shank that is 1. So we get this value as 209.21 kN. This is for a single bolt. Okay, that you have to understand. Now, total VDSB is equal to 209.21 multiply by number of bolts in a plate is 4 836.8 kN. Now, third step is to calculate bearing capacity for which we have formula VD PB is equal to 2.5 KB DTFU or FUB whichever be small we will take that gamma MB now KB is taken as least of E by 3 D naught P by 3 D naught minus 1 0 0.25 the next value will be 1 and F U B by F U generally the value will come from these two value these two are generally greater than these two value okay now what is the value of E and P so if we see in the figure you have been provided with the two distance this and this but we should know that the value for n distance is to be taken with respect to the plate itself this is the interception okay so you will not take the value of e from this side you will take the value from this side the load application you have to understand so value of e is 55 and the value for p is 110 okay then you can calculate and get the value as minimum to be 0 0.75 okay third is uh, then you can get the value for BDP B. okay here it is 2.5 times 0 0.75 times diameter is 18 thickness now 8 mm 8 mm so you have to take uh, the smaller value the summation is 16 mm and this is 18 mm so 16 mm is smaller so you will provide 16 mm FU or FUB whichever is small FU is 410 FUB is 1000 so you will take FU that is 410 by 1.25 which comes to be 177.120 kN. So in third step we will have to find yielding capacity. You can find this in the code book at page number 32 to yielding of cross section uh, which says T D is equal to A G F Y by gamma M naught. F Y is the yield stress of the material, A G is the gross area and gamma M naught is the partial safety factor for failure. Okay. So A G is the gross area of the section. So the gross area of the section will be 220 okay 55 110 55 so it will be 210 multiply by the thickness which is 16 multiply by 250 divided by 1.25 okay this uh, this value comes as 800 kilonewton so tdn is equal to 0 0.9 an fu by gamma m1 by gross area and net area okay this is a net area so you have to reduce the size of the bolt okay so 210 minus 2 bolts of size 20 you have to multiply with the clearance hole 2 into 20 multiply by thickness 16 this will be the net area okay multiply by fu that is 410 by 1.25 we get this value as 850.17 kN. The fourth, fifth one is to calculate the total shear capacity in friction load. You can just do this at the beginning also, okay, just below here. This is for a single bolt, okay, these are for single bolt. You have to find it for number of bolts, that is 4. So at working load VD. F B working is equal to four times one hundred eight point nine four. So this value comes to be five hundred fifty five point seven six kilonewton in ultimate load. 
वी डी एफ बी डब्ल्यू इज इक्वल टू फोर इंटू वन टू टू पॉइंट टू सिक्स वी गेट दिस एज फोर एट नाइन पॉइंट जीरो फोर टोटल वी दैट इज बेरिंग कैपेसिटी इज इक्वल टू फोर इंटू वन सेवन सेवन पॉइंट वन टू विच कम्स एज सेवन हंड्रेड एट पॉइंट फोर एट किलो न्यूटन दीज आर दी कंडीशन फॉर स्लीप ओके इफ स्लीप इज परमिटेड एट वर्किंग लोड इफ स्लीप इज नॉट परमिटेड एट वर्किंग लोड एंड इफ स्लीप इज नॉट परमिटेड एट अल्टीमेट लोड सो स्टार्टिंग विद स्लीप एट वर्किंग लोड दैट मीन्स द बोल्ड विद स्लीप एट दी working load that means bearing comes into act for the safety of the structure so design strength of a bolt will be minimum of the bearing capacity shearing capacity yielding and rupture capacity as in the previous example the second step or the second condition is what will be the design strength if a uh, slip is permitted at working load that means slip may occur at the ultimate load this is the thing you have to understand from this statement so design strength of the bolt will be dependent on the frictional shear capacity of the working load so minimum of shear friction capacity at working load bearing capacity uh, shearing uh, bearing yielding and rupture you will not consider the shear strength of the bolt now in case of slip not permitted at ultimate load so it means there won't be slip at any cases so it is a high friction bolt you can say so in this case you have to consider minimum of yielding bearing total shear friction capacity in ultimate load so generally it comes to be total shear friction capacity in ultimate load uh, so it is equal to 489.04 kN you can generally write slip not permitted ultimate load is equal to total shear friction capacity in ultimate load so 